What's up geniuses, my name is Adrian Rivera and welcome back to the channel where you learn to show your genius. Today we're going to be talking about how to use the mixer in FL Studio 20. But before we get into that, I have to tell you guys something. Welcome back to my wall. Let's see if I have a silver play button yet. What? It's my necklace. <laughs> I've been looking all over for this bloody thing. Let's put it on. <clears throat> Get is new. So I don't have a silver play button yet. And without that silver play button, this wall is pretty empty. So if you want to help be a part of this wall, subscribe. You'll be able to tell your kids in the future that you helped put a silver play button on this wall. So help me out. I don't want to have a British, is that offensive? I don't want to have a European accent for too long. Now this video is part of my five part beginner series course. If you haven't seen any of the other videos, make sure you click the eye icon up here. That'll take you to my FL Studio beginners crash course, where you'll learn all the basics of FL Studio and know everything you need to get started with making music. Now this course was a project that I was going to make but never ended up finishing and instead of keeping it on my computer just sitting there I decided to release it to YouTube. I made this back in 2018 so keep in mind that I might sound a little different, FL Studio might look a little different but overall the concepts are going to be the same. Now this course isn't free. In order to watch this course you need to like this video and if you don't like this video I'll come to your house and eat your computer. You see these views, you see these likes, not everybody's doing their part and paying up so leave a like right now. But without further ado let's hop into FL Studio. All right welcome to chapter one lesson four mixer before i get into this lesson i wanted to say that today there's a severe thunderstorm warning so if you hear any rumbling in the background i'm sorry unfortunately there's nothing i can do about mother nature but from the looks of it it shouldn't be that big of a problem now what exactly is the mixer what i want to do is i want to go to the view mixer button up here in the toolbar and click it to pop up the mixer. And your mixer more than likely is gonna look something like this. Essentially, what the mixer is gonna be is our central hub for organizing sounds and how those sounds interact with each other by adding effects to them or changing the volume so we can get a more even mix. The first thing I wanna do is bring up the channel rack. You can see here, I've made a quick pattern with this snare. And I'm gonna be using this pattern as an example for what you can do with the mixer. So first things first, let's go over the interface of the mixer. On the complete left side, we have a decibel meter so we can track how loud whichever channel we select is. So it's basically our volume monitor. After that, we have the master channel and this is where every single one of our sound is gonna be routed to. This master channel affects every single sound in the project, no matter what it is, and that will never change. After that, in the middle, you'll notice we have over a hundred more individual mixer channels. Now soon I'll be going over what everything Thing is in this mixer channel and once you know one of these channels you'll know how to use every single one of these because essentially these are all the exact same thing on the complete right side of the mixer we have the effects slots that allows us to add effects to whatever mixer channel we select so you'll notice that I have mixer channel 1 selected if I click this arrow and click on a random effect like reverb and then go to another mixer channel that effect only stays on mixer channel 1 so I'm just gonna delete that really quick after that we have the mix level which is basically the volume of the effect and the mute and solo button just like the one on the channel rack and just like the mixer channels once you know one of these slots, you know how to use the rest of them. After that, we have this integrated EQ or equalizer. And right now you're not gonna understand this, but in the near future, when we talk about EQ, this will make a lot more sense, but more than likely you're not gonna be using this. After that, we have the track latency and audio output target. These are things that you're more than likely not gonna have to worry about whatsoever, because I can never see a time where you're gonna end up using these. After that, we have the audio input sources. So like our microphones or our guitars, whatever audio input we decide to put into the mixer. Now, in order to get a sound into one of these mixer channels you're going to want to go to your channel rack and select the sound that you want remember when we talked about the target mixer track whatever number you select is going to be the corresponding mixer channel that this sound is going to be put onto so if we set this to one this snare will play on mixer channel one and if we set it to something like 10 it'll play on 10 and if we set it to nothing it'll play on the master channel only so for now, I'm gonna put this to one. Now what you can also do is select the sound that you wanna put into the mixer, go to whatever mixer track it is you wanna assign the sound to, right click, go to channel routing, and click route selected channels to this track. And if you wanna rename this mixer channel, you're gonna wanna right click and click rename. So let's call this cool snare. And then let's set this to a purple. And there you go. Now just like the rest of these buttons, this is the mute and solo button. After that, we have the left and right panning, just like the panning on the channel rack. Next, we have the fader, which controls the volume. After that, we have this reverse polarity switch. And to explain that a little more, I'm actually going to show you this visual representation. So this is how the sound wave of our snare looks like. If we click reverse polarity, the sound wave essentially flips over on itself and it gives it a slightly different sound. 
Below that, we have the swap left and right channels. So basically, whatever's going on in the left ear and the right ear, those will be swapped. After that, we have the stereo separation knob. And this is something I'll be talking about a lot more in the future. So don't worry about that just yet. Below that, we have the effects on and off switch, which right now is off because there's no effects. But if we had effects, we can toggle it on and off through that button. After that, we have track latency and arm disc recording, which you're not really going to be worrying about. And right here, we have our routing. And you can see this arrow goes down and into the master channel. But if we wanted to unroute this to the master channel, channel we could click the arrow above wherever it's routed and it'll disconnect and we could choose one of these arrows and reroute this channel into something else to create buses so basically what's happening right now is whatever sound goes through here will go through this channel and whatever sound that goes through this channel will go back into the master so when i click play you'll see that happening I'm just gonna send this back into the master. After that, we have different views that we could set for the mixer. So you can see compact, compact two, which is what I always use, compact alternate, which basically just puts the labeling at the bottom, wide, wide two, wide three, wide alternate, extra large. But I'm just gonna keep it at compact two. After that, we can toggle on and off the effects panel. We can hide or show these extra options down here. And instead of viewing these meters, we can view those as waveforms by clicking this button. And personally, I like to see the waveforms, but you can go with whatever way works for you. Next, we have the multi-touch control, which is something you most likely won't be using, so don't worry about that. And after that, we have some mixer options that you most likely won't be using that much either. But that is essentially it for the mixer. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Now, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Make sure to leave me a comment saying, yes, these tips helped you out. And if they didn't help you out, feel free to ask me any questions and I'll do my best to reply. If you're looking for any high quality beats, make sure you check out my beat store. Currently, there's only three beats, but I'm going to be putting more beats out there very soon. All the beats up there are beats that I would use myself, but decided to give to you guys because I know you guys can come up with some pretty crazy stuff. So feel free to check it out. Link is in the description. The world's pretty crazy right now, so stay safe, drink a lot of water, and remember, don't be afraid to show your genius.